Let me know if we're swapping over. <laughs> All right, it's working. It's only four minutes late, but we are ready. We are ready to stream. We're ready to bring some SketchUp and layout to you. Tyson, right here on the screen, you're seeing him now. He's going to bring some woodworking tips. He's going to bring some, hey, how do you want to go from 3D to 2D to the shop? You bring it all in at once. Oh my gosh, we're bringing it all together. Folks, today we got a great stream going. We got some good music going. What are you drinking? What are you working on? Where are you watching from? This is going to be a fun stream. Let us know in the chat. And hey, let's get it started. SketchUp Live, Tyson Karchner. <laughs> oh, wow. Thanks, Matt. You are always bringing, bringing it hard and heavy. Bringing the energy, uh, which I appreciate. Um, hey, everybody. <laughs> I, behind the scenes, we're two minutes away from starting and then the uh, audio quits and the camera starts glitching and you know, all the things that you'd expect. So <laughs> it's always great to have Matt here cause he's like, quick, change this, 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 and he fixes it. It's amazing. Hey, we're up and running. We got the plane in the air. So that's we're there. Yeah, so hey, uh, woodworking plans. I don't know. Is that is that something of interest to anybody out there? We're um, let's bring it down for a moment. Let's let's talk. Let's 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 get real here. Matt, real. this one has kind of thrown me for a loop. And what we're gonna get into um, is you know, a typical Friday model or session where have an image or a model or something like, okay, let's do that. This time I kept re going back and, and rethinking of what should we do? Because work, wood, woodworking plans are an open-ended, like there's a lot of variety out there. So I'm not... <laughs> I, I don't have a definitive, like, this is how it should be done. I do have a few definitive, this are some things you probably shouldn't do. And, uh, and some suggestions depending on what you want to end up doing. But let's look at a few examples to start with and, and see um, if that'll help send us down the, you know, some considerative type of things. Let me... I think, a, you know, example is a good place to start. I definitely, I don't uh, think anybody, me included, anybody in the chat is uh, is hoping that you're going to be entirely comprehensive of everything <laughs> that woodworking uh, and SketchUp has to uh, encompass in the next two hours. But uh, whatever you have to show, I'm here for it. So, uh, hey, I can speak for everybody when I say, bring it on. Whatever you got, I'm, I'm ready for it. <laughs> Sweet. <clears throat> I, I do want to make sure I do not um, forget. I, I have to send a huge, huge thank you to our friend Dave R., Dave Richards, who is actually responsible for some of the plans that we're going to look at uh, in these examples. But he and I chatted multiple times this week so he could give me. Uh, he has a lot of insight into this, um, into SketchUp in general, and definitely into woodworking and uh, these type of plans. So thank you, Dave, if you're out there, a huge thank you. A lot of what I'll be saying, I won't be giving him direct credit for, but it probably came from him. So without acknowledging it every five minutes, thank you. <laughs> yes, Dave, you're the man. So um, this is, this is a, an article from fine woodworking magazine. And I wanted to show this one to kind of contrast it to another set. That's the same thing. This is the article about building this beautiful tool chest designed by Mike Pekovich. Um, and it starts with this really lovely illustration, uh, some call outs, some sizes, but this isn't everything necessarily that you'd need perhaps, or maybe it is. And that's where some of my, sort of however you want to phrase it fiddly like indecision came from is like you can get one or two pages 
and give it to somebody. And that might be all that's necessary with some dimensions and they could run out and do it. So here's a second version, the same thing. This one's a little bit different because uh, one, it's not, you know, lovely illustrations, but they are lovely illustrations, but it's black and white and it's got some more dimensions. And whereas um, this one is the article, which means that they're going to talk about like the build process and some of the steps to consider along the way. This version is very much says, you know how to do woodworking. Um, yeah, so technical drawings, kind technical of drawings. We're just going to give you the information you need, but we don't have to tell you how to do it. Mm -hmm. That's it doesn't have to be, but there's kind of different approaches you could take depending on if you wanted to create a more robust how to set of plans longer with a lot more steps versus one like this, where you can say, uh, a, you know, a couple pages of some dimensions and technical drawings, as you say, is all somebody may need. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of considerations and, and I hope it won't be so confusing as we're sort of jumping around um, between considerations, but we're going to have lots to talk about today. Um, just a, a, a few more, again, examples of something where I, I, for one, am a sucker for like these beautiful uh, illustration type of drawings, mm -hmm. even... The technical drawing can be this lovely thing. Um, but again, if you wanted to have just printouts, this is a nicer version to print out. It's not, you know, tons of color or something and it, you, you get what you need. So that is one consideration. I did want to show, and I'm going to jump into SketchUp here. I wanted to show some of the drawings from Nick Sonder. And these are architectural drawings. Um, but for a reason, we're going to talk we about... need a lot of wood for this one. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this, this, uh, the cut list on this is, is impressive. <laughs> Let's... Uh, oh, oops. Let me, the reason I wanted to uh, pull this up, mm -hmm. depending on, again, the drawings that you're trying to do, be it woodworking drawings or other drawings, because I hope some of the tips we have will be just applicable for anybody kind of transitioning between SketchUp and Layout. Um, the first thing, I, a lot of what we're talking about today doesn't have necessarily rules or more of like guidelines or considerations, but I, I have been convinced that if you're going to create drawings of any sort that you're like distributing to somebody, like if you're just doing them for yourself, you may not even create drawings. You could take measurements directly from your SketchUp model and it could be pretty loose. But if you're going to create anything, you really should try to have one source of truth. And what I mean by that is one model. So, and, and that's not necessarily to say, like, for example, in here, that once you've built your model, you won't make a copy of it, say, in the same file over here where we're going to create our exploded view, or that you might not take some of uh, these pieces and, you know, copy them and lay them out so that you can then measure them uh, or throw some dimensions on them more easily. What it means is you want to avoid, and this is highly hypocritical coming from me, you <laughs> want to avoid a file that's like, this is version one, and then you have another file that's version two, and then within version two, you have four versions so let me let me um let me show you how my messy brain works this <laughs> <laughs> this keeps going because <laughs> once so upon don't a time plans from this model you mean I, yeah no don't don't do it 
Now I, I'm I'm admitting that if I'm in my kind of idea phase, I'm trying to design something, and I'm like, okay, I ch that was uh, at a different when I was in a different room, and then I was going to rebuild an office desk, and I'm playing. Oh, do I want just straight legs? Maybe I want to try curved ones. Those are way too curved. This one, okay, well, I'm going to come back to straight. Um, I'm going to embed something in the back here, change the top. Then I change to, nope, I'm going to get one of those standing desks, so I'm just going to build the top. But I'm going to have some room over here on the side for a set of drawers. Those drawers changed, and then I took the top off, and eventually I built uh, something pretty close to this. I mean, I think this is pretty cool for just walking through the design process, like to see how you you worked through the problem, you know? But uh, yeah, I could see where if you want to, nice clean uh, model for pulling dimension strings off or whatever and viewing stuff in elevation. It wouldn't be this one. It would not be this one. I even have my leftover like bigified version of this tiny little drawer pool because, you know, reasons of... <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not going to suggest to somebody that like whether you take your you know, say this is the design that I, that's pretty close or, or this one, which, and I copy that into a different model. And then from then on that becomes it. And I have to fix, cause I would have to fix a lot of stuff here based on what we're going to talk about or whether you just redraw it from scratch. I, I, I don't know based on if you, if you model very clean from the start and you don't have all this baggage, but <laughs> baggage it's good i know I, I i am i am uh renowned in these parts for my file graveyards and this is this is <laughs> yeah very much the A truth good example of that for sure yeah um but i think that and check me if i'm wrong i think the the general idea behind it being if you have one kind of model that everything can be drawn from then you're not Pardon the fun. You're not redrawing other. You're not redrawing things because it's all in there. It's just like you're taking components out and then referencing those versus like drawing everything from scratch from a different view or something. Right. Um, so this um, this is the version, and let me uh, just change my style here. So this is what we want to to try to achieve. I don't have, um, uh, you could do some design variations in here, but, uh, but you're still going to follow the same rules, which is, again, I, I, I'm hypocritical on this. Everything in your model is going to be a component. Even, you know, so we will talk about, say, maybe this front rail was curved and it's the only part that looks like that. Well, general SketchUp rules suggest that, well, that's a one-off. I could make it a group. I don't have to make it a component. But no, for this to work, for this uh, to be consistent, every object in your model is a component, even if it's only one. And an immediate reason why that's important is we, we are copying it over here. Um, so even though that's only one piece in the bench in our model, we, we're, we're planning to copy it for say exploded view or for parts view. So, um, that's one reason. Another reason as we're going to get into is we want the name, the thing that I never do and Aaron never does. And that many of you out there are probably a little guilty of is not naming your components, but rule two or three or four or whatever, or four A or whatever we're on, <laughs> take the time to name your components. I didn't name these necessarily well. Most of these are like uh, front stretcher, back stretcher, back, back rest stretcher, uh, side curve stretch. As long as it's something. Um, as long as it's a stretcher then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I, I don't know what a lot of these technically would be called, but name your components so that you don't have component number 47. Um, 
because we're going to get to layout and and those names are going to be really helpful so where's my <clears throat> so good call that's a good tip as we move forward these are the things that um i i suggest are going to be useful regardless of what path you take one model again if you had a designed version that had iterations you have to either clean that up or or create a, a a singular model but no version one version two or stuff like that um, every object in here is, is a component no no object groups if you just for the sake of i'm going to group this move it over here and then explode it whatever but the objects themselves all all groups no matter what um this one is interesting and this one i i struggle with i love going in and just creating random nested groups and components and it's a little messy but for me it works really well and i can be just fly through and be efficient and i would have created most of this um, as a nested component and then copied it over. But inside that, I might have some groups, some components, and then I would, all of that, avoid that. This model doesn't have any nested um, except for this one where I put a small indication of a screw hole, and that's optional um, into the these seat slats. But everything else, you know, I think many of us would typically nest this side assembly together. And that makes sense. And then we'd copy it over and then we'd make changes. And that's because when we come in and say, well, when I drop this down two inches, the other side automatically adjusts. And here, when I drop this down, I'm going to come over here and do the same. But if you keep shallow nesting it means when you break this model apart down the road because this is all in consideration of we're taking this model fully to documentation if you have nested components and nesting two and three levels then you have to be very deliberate about if i explode something here and change something over here for the purpose of documentation am i exploding or changing my model I might be. And if you don't have that deep nesting, then you don't have that concern. So it's it's tricky to do. It's not tricky to do. It's it's a shift, at least for me, to say, I, I'm going to stop trying to build in all this nesting efficiency, which I love doing, in favor of clarity. And maybe I lose a little bit of efficiency when I'm building the model because when I do something over here that I know I need to change it on the opposite side, that may be, or maybe you nest and then you explode before document. However you do it, just consider that you want absolute clarity and you want synchronicity between stuff. Anything that happens back here as I'm pulling parts, you know, into different configurations you're not actually changing the model you know groups uh or components themselves so yeah makes sense overall you're uh creating less headaches or fewer headaches even though mm -hmm. in maybe in the short term it's a little bit of a a mindset shift or like a you know you have to kind of reset your uh your mental uh, muscle memory of you know component within a component within a component Right. <clears throat> um, so keep that in mind and then uh, anticipate sort of where you're going. So some of these other things we're going to cover as we go. Let's, um, so if I look over here at my component browser, ideally, yeah, I've everything in here component and this is nice so you know when I come back through here I've modeled every loose tenon in here and when I um, need to say 
how many two inch by uh, three eighths inch ten inch do I have? Well, I now I know when I select them. Now, in this case, I've copied this, so the twenty eights reflected over here too. Um, but I can get an idea of okay, I have that many of, uh, of that loose ten inch. Some, uh, so if you just take the time to really build the model, that's um, a lot of everything we do just comes back to having a very clear, consistent model. And like I say, for me, that means avoiding some of the kind of efficiencies that I like and shortcuts that I like to, to model with. But um, you're working towards more, more efficiency down the road. So yeah, let's... I see that. I have one quick question. If, mm -hmm. do, so do you uh, name all your components and uh, split them up like this as you're doing the initial modeling? Are you just like making it and then going back and um, tagging stuff after you kind of know, like you said, there's some kind of iteration in the design process? Or do you like kind of get all the way to your final thing and then go back and rename everything? Uh, you should do it as you go. And this is me. Um, <clears throat> Uh, owning up that if I had to go back and and rework, I would probably be missing stuff and I would probably skip steps and I would want to keep moving forward. And so you should definitely do it as you go. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of hold yourself accountable. I, and again, that's because I, I'm, yeah. I'm, I know that I would uh, be bad down the road. <laughs> Let, so let's let's build a simple model like that. We're going to sort of jump between this model, the the last one, some other ones. Let's build out an example and and create a, a document for it. So let's say we're going to build a kind of a simple bar stool that won't have too many parts. We can build it out. So um, So I'm going to take this. I know I'm going to turn the sides up because, you know, this is going to be on my page and I'm not copying this all over. So maybe I will turn this up, say, to 60 so that I have a, a nice, more clear circle. And this is a one inch, maybe. So this is the. Uh, Call it the top, we call it the seat. I don't know what a bar stool height is going to be. We're going to make this uh, 30 inches high. I don't know if that's actually. <laughs> it's comfortable to me. Yeah. Okay, so let's say. Uh, for the legs, we're gonna have legs that come up. We're gonna make this angular instead of uh, curved necessarily, keep things simple, but um, so for our leg, again, let's say we've got a one inch by, we'll start by one by two inch. That was 30, so we're gonna bring this up, uh, let's say 26 inches. We do have somebody in the chat saying it should be 24 inches. I don't know if it's too late to change it, but. Oh, okay. Um, oh, and Dave said it depends on the height of the bar. So maybe you sure. have a higher than normal uh, bar there. That makes sense. So we'll create that. And and while we're building this, this, this is... Uh, we didn't we didn't shout out as much as uh, we usually do because we were <laughs> flustered when we started. Um, some of the questions I would love to sit down and chat with people about because, like I said, I I did speak to Dave a bit this week, but like, what kind of plans either do you create or do you find useful? Like, would you create some color? Some people create a lot of like varying colors because then they can coordinate you know, the color in the assembled model with the, the cut sheet, and then you get kind of this connection between them. Some people don't want that because you don't want to have to print out 50 pages of full color. 
But then somebody else might go back into their shop and be like, I, why would I print anything out at all? I've got my iPad or, or Android or whatever, and I'm just here. So I love the color. So I would be curious. I would love to hear kind of some um, opinions on what people uh, do and prefer with their models. Yeah. Yeah. Let us know in the chat. I'll read it out. How do you use, how do you use plans? Do you print them out? Do you look at them on your computer, your iPad, or do you like the color? Do you like the black and white? What do you think? And it looks like Andy's, uh, off to the pub. So thanks for stopping by, but, uh, we'll catch you later. Have fun. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm going to create a unique component here to keep going, but I'm going to make sure that when I do, this is, I'm going to rename it. Uh, Brian says he uses colors uh, slash shaded areas to depict uh, cutoff and waste areas. Interesting. Carl says, color on PC screen, but black and white for printout. Uh, Barry says, usually just exports JPEGs from SketchUp with dimensions and prints those out. Uh, Martin says, no color, black and white, going for speed. The speediest prints in the game are definitely not the color prints, so that makes sense. If you're using somebody else's printer, then uh, color <laughs> makes a lot more sense, but... Uh... Transom black and white prints. Uh, Studio RT Cool says, I like a style with muted colors and black lines. Uh, done that in PowerCAD by dialing back the opacity of shaded layers, but done similar in layout with a scrim layer, which I know Dave R does. Black and white, black and white, black and white. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, Dave says to ask you about the ski rack plan that he shared with you. What's well, that what that's about is uh, Dave was kind of, you know, flexing his. He created this ski rack plan that was like detailed and carved down to like the tenth of a millimeter. And I was just like, man, only you. <laughs> I'm totally that that's not at all true. Uh he he was showing me because I, I was I was teasing Dave about, you know, he's usually very meticulous uh in a good way about everything he draws, but in this case it was like one straight line with four lines, one here, 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 and it was basically his digital story stick of like, here's a bolt, here's a bolt, here's a hanger. Here's a thing he just needed because he doesn't he didn't need to draw a plan for a, a simple project and it sounds like some people get that like when it's just you then you yeah the level you know, of information you know the exact level of information that you need to put in because you know what information you have within exactly yeah um. So let's, uh, I am going to say that for this one, we are creating a half lap. Sure, a half lap. Sure. We work well because you know what you're talking about and I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's funny is I'm going to say something like that and somebody's going to be like, nope, that's a dadoed rabbit. If you say so, because I don't know, actually. <laughs> well, I uh, trust you implicitly. So for this, it goes as far as I'm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then. Uh... Brian asks uh, where the pocket hole screws are going on this project. Everywhere. When are you going to model those? The pocket holes <laughs> are everywhere, and they're also sticking out because they are a decorative <laughs> element. Mm hmm. Yeah. 
I always like the little <laughs> ovals, you know, on the <laughs> top of your stool or on the, yeah, makes sense. Well, I mean, the pocket holes are going next to the radioactive um, uh, resin infill. That's going to be also a <laughs> key part of this plan. Brian. <laughs> um, Brian was, uh, was, was uh, chatting with us at some point, and I, I believe he suggested that all resin tables will someday be filling futuristic um, dumps, futuristic, and, and therefore we'll be gathering all the radiation in and then imbuing it back out. So that was his <laughs> view on resin tables. <coughs> Pardon me. Yeah. Okay, yeah, what are we it. doing here? What are we doing here? <clears throat> Maybe at this point we will like, so we've, we'll come back and curve this one. And so I'm gonna copy that. You know what, Matt? Um, you should have uh, been like Tyson. Don't do it. Because I was like, oh, what's a quick what's a quick example we can draw in real time? I have some pre-made examples, but what's a quick one I can draw? I'm like, well, bar stool. There's only, there's only a few pieces, but now I'm like, I don't like it. I want to design it different, and then I get stuck. Being like, <laughs> just supposed to you keep have a time moving forward. Each. <laughs> yeah, each step has a two minute time limit. Mm hmm. So, uh, we're done with the leg. That's a, that's a good looking leg. Daryl says, gotta go. Well, thanks for stopping by. Catch you later. Have a good week. Yes, have a great one. So um, if we were to keep, you know, going down this path of uh, detailing this out, I am going to just throw a not great um, centerpiece in here and we'll keep moving forward for the sake of uh, what we're trying to do. But, but this is junk. We, uh, We'll make it a weird octagon thing. Yeah, I like it. it's like War of the Worlds. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> uh, Lawrence uh, has a reminder for you too. Shame. Ooh, you, you don't want to tempt fate? Uh, I mean, well, you'd have to save before you send a layout, right? That's, that's true. That's true. We have to do it. The, that's the finish line. That's your. That's why you shouldn't spend all time designing because you want to get to that point as soon as possible so that uh, if you want to do it without saving at all, that's your kind of your checkpoint. checkpoint I mean, Charlie, this is pretty much on par with the the cathedral, the uh, Notre Dame. I mean, look at this thing. It's, it's insanely beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll say <laughs> Stick a spire on this thing, and I think people would be uh, riveted by it for generations. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, <laughs> we had a question from LinkedIn about: um, Are there extra keyboard shortcuts you're using to design faster? Oh, um, that's a great question because yes, every keyboard sh shortcut I have is custom. Ooh, that's impressive. You don't use any default? Uh, line tool, maybe? L. L is the line tool. That's the one. Yeah. Okay. E. E is eraser. That's the same. 
Um, okay, so I'm that's not about trying to make it. a liar out of you, but. <laughs> <laughs> but you just did. <laughs> Fair enough. But uh, no, so you have a lot of custom control because are you on the tablet today? No, I uh, uh, no. Yeah, sometimes I, I, I draw on my Wacom tablet. I'm, I'm just using a mouse today. Uh, and and that's because we're going to layout. I I love a Wacom for SketchUp. I do not for layout. So that's just don't love it. Good to know. But short answer, yes, a lot of yes, a lot of different keyboard shortcuts for you. So and I I do recommend people use and make their own keyboard shortcuts. I I don't suggest you use mine because a lot of them don't make sense. Because they came from other programs, so yeah. Push pull for me is B, but that's just because it's close to where my hand rests, and so there's no association. Stuff like that. I don't like it. I'm sorry. I don't. Like it. <laughs> Andy asks, "What's your rotate uh, shortcut?" Rotate. It should yeah. be R. Huh. Yeah. So maybe that's the same too. Everybody's calling me out on like, I, I, I claimed I didn't have any and you are totally calling my bluff. No, the default is Q. Oh, R is, is it? rectangle. Yeah. Oh, well, rectangle for me is C and R is rotate. Of course. Yeah. Okay. I mean, naturally. I, why you want would... to speed up your workflow, switch your rectangle shortcut <laughs> to C. <laughs> <laughs> Eric is okay. impressed that you're using tags. Okay, so uh, thank you, Eric. The next part of this uh, workflow that um, we talked about, try to you know make sure every object is a is a component. Use shallow nesting uh, if possible, as much as possible. One source of truth, one model. Tags, tags are phenomenal and tags are super important in this. So yes, um, we want to use tags and there's, I, I, I want to try to show kind of two approaches to tags. So this is one, this is the first one. And this one's fairly straightforward. We're creating tags based on what is actually in your model. So some of this should be pretty self-evident. So we're going to make this one uh, the top, or I think we called it seat. Maybe we should rename it to the seat so that consistent. Mm -hmm. And of course, some people like to uh, leave tags off. That way you know that as you tag something and it goes off, then it's, you know, then you correctly assigned it. Ah, oh, that's a good call. See, I, I assigned that to upper leg. That was wrong. So <laughs> hold on. <laughs> yeah, well, it won't tell you if it's putting it on the right tag. It'll just yeah. be an attack. Attack. <laughs> that was intentional that uh, for um, that purpose. That was totally. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so convincing. Uh, get out of here, scale figure of me, handsome as you are. <laughs> we don't need you, and and uh, we can remove you from our library. Aww. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I'm gonna I'm gonna put. Uh, let's say that uh, for this one. What we need to do here is attach this in some way, you know, for simplicity, we may not have to, but I'm going to show um, uh, how to do a loose tenon here because it's one of sort of the pieces that I think is interesting to consider for that type of joinery. So a loose tenon, a lot of people know this, uh, a mortise and tenon is when you have in one piece of wood, you sort of cut... Um, something like this. And then in your second piece of wood, uh, 
you have your mortise and then those join together. Okay. And a loose tenon is when this piece here is separate. So it's not integral, it's not built into the, and it's uh, also called floating. And then both pieces have essentially a mortise and the tenon joints between them. And there's various ways to cut those and make those. Um, but a common way to do it is with a router and that will leave you with round ends. So we're gonna make it that version. Um, some of you will know there's also, you could do the same with a domino joiner, uh, what's called a domino joiner, although that's, uh, I think less common out there, very nice and handy to have. But so we're gonna make essentially And I better make this something real. So what is this? What did we make this? What was it, Matt? I think the piece of wood is two, but that piece, so, um, so we'll get away with uh, one inch. We'll make a one inch. And we'll make it this, we said was, I think one inch, so. Maybe I'll make it one inch by five eighths. Uh, that's not what I meant to do. <laughs> one, let's make it one by two inches and the depth is three eighths inch. That's what I meant to do. That looks good to me then we're going to call it good. I'm going to see. Shoot. The other day I was using flip to do this and it kept copying my little arc instead of, ah, oh, you know what? That's on the wrong side. Instead of just, uh, One copy was doing like multiple copies. It was weird. Hmm. I know. That's like, uh, okay. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Roll with it. Yep. Okay, so this is my loose tenon. First that, make sure we're... Okay. Um... <clears throat> two inches long we'll get into how to dimension some of this stuff or how to call out dimensions on it but um, in different pieces you might have different versions so that'll work fine now I talked about not um, nesting and I think that's still good advice on stuff for uh, the main objects. I'm going to nest something in here. So <gasps> I know, but it's, you know, it's a specific case for our uh, tenon because it'll make it easier to play. So I'm going to go in and create, you know what? Hold on. I'm going to do it outside and then I will paste it in. So I'm going to draw a line down to this center point and I mean, just basically create some guides so it's easier for me to place this on the center. And that could look like anything, but this should work just fine. So I'm going to take this, these three lines, make them a component, and then drop it inside here and over here on tags and create actually I better create one for tenants too and the guy and this is going to go on 
tenant guides. And then this as a whole is going on tenants. So that way I can turn that just off visibly when I want it. All right. <clears throat> uh, Randy has a question. So is not nesting components a practice for all modeling or just woodworking? Um, I love nesting. I, uh, it's not a practice that I, I, I necessarily suggest for everything you're doing, but in the, in this process where we know we're going to take the model, copy it over to a certain point, explode it, take certain pieces of it. And we want to preserve, we just want to preserve the clarity of uh, that if we do come back and make changes that those changes ripple through any copies we've made that's just that's the intention if you are very meticulous on how you nest and you're very careful about how you do it and you have a system by all means um doing it it's it's just a way to you know maintain you fire like, you could get burned for sure <laughs> yeah but uh <laughs> Yeah, but they're obviously, you know, nesting stuff, I feel like is an important part of a lot of people's workflow. But uh, yeah, for this particular thing, it seems like it just is trying to avoid uh, avoid unwanted uh, outcomes. Yeah. Um, and a nice message from Paul on LinkedIn saying, thank you, SketchUp. Uh, he's just finished his 51st practice model. Um, uh, originally designed in SolidWorks and then recreated all of them in SketchUp and um, SketchUp has helped him bring to life new ideas, 3D print um, replacement items for some of his mechanical builds and he always learns a lot from you and Aaron. So, hey, that's really nice to hear, Paul. Thanks for uh, leaving the comment. That's very thing. Yeah, that's awesome. And you, you've got a, a number. That's great. <laughs> you like know exactly what you, that's so fun. He's got the stats down. I always wish I had that, like, you know, in a video game. When you finish a video game, you can see how many, whatever, how many mm -hmm. miles you traveled, how many, you know, X things that you collected. I'm like, I wish I had that for real life, you know. This is your, <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Nice. Totally. You know. Um, but, yeah, no, that's super cool to hear. That is. Um, <clears throat> so let's let's document this little um, bar stool that we created and apologies if uh, for whoever suggested it be a 24 height I left it at 30 but um, but hey we could we could change that um, if we wanted we're not we'll keep going right now um, yeah let's go for it depending on uh, how you like to work so what I'm gonna do here is create a simple layout um, document of this and then we'll we'll show some more robust uh, or complicated or whatever examples you may want though just for again repetition or a system that you can can easily uh, just know what you're doing i'm going to take and i want to copy this over here some distance so if i always model let's say at the origin where i say okay at least the outer extents of my model uh, are at the origin, which I use, which I don't. I always model somewhere over here. But if I copy this 10 feet, and then I move it 10 feet this way, um, that's easy to remember. And if I always do that for all my models, again, it may not matter, but now I know I've got, I could even, without creating something here, I could create a scene here, use that same thing in layout, and I know as long as I've copied my models to 10 feet over that they're going to be in a similar position. So that's optional, but it is something we could do. I'm going to take Thanks. this one, move this up, and this will be our exploded view. So I'm going to bring this out this out and bring this out. And um, let's create some scenes. So 
There's another tip that uh, I think some people have seen out there, but uh, I think uh, I'll give Dave credit for. If I go turn perspective off, and then if I select, you know, because I'm going to create sort of some front and and actually this, I only need a front view. The side view is going to be identical, but I can right click on what's selected and say somewhere here is a uh, zoom selection among some plugins here. So it's going to center it and it's going to maximize this, this view. And so with my scenes, I'm going to create a scene. Now, this again gets into a personal preference. For me, I don't like saving everything into a scene because uh, there, it becomes too easy for me to accidentally change later. I like saving just what I want. Um, I will give credit again to Dave for he does like saving all this stuff um, in his method. And he's very smart, so you may want to do that. <laughs> I'm going to turn most of this stuff off though and control it later on. I do want the camera position. Um, then I'm going to go, I'm not going to change anything. I'm going to go top and I've got the same, I should have the same kind of scale um, without having changed it. What? I, I copied this badly. All right, well, I'll fix that. <laughs> in this case we're only going to need I say uh, I will jump to the side view um, because you typically would would have a side view but and, and I'll do it so that we can show this in layout but in our case we're not going to need it mm -hmm. and maybe I'll call this right side or left side depending on I don't know, which one is this? It's front view. Did I already do, oh, I, oh, see, that's not even, that's left. I'll say this, the left view. Now, how did I mess this up? I was gonna say that looks like a stool that I put together if it's got the top wobbling off to one side. <laughs> Let's make sure they were aligned, and then if we go here and here, <coughs> excuse me. Curiously, I'm not sure why it's jumping up a little bit so well. So we've got those over here. I'm going to turn perspective back on and get uh, an axon view. <coughs> perspective is P, not push pull. That's how it should be. Was that a sneeze? Because <laughs> in tight, if it was. No, it was, it was cough. Oh, okay. It was a ridiculous claim <laughs> about what your keyboard shortcuts should be. So I'm going to pick, you know, a view. Um, a lot of this uh, is in consideration of what your output is. This is not very complicated, and I don't suspect we're going to have trouble fitting this on one or two pages. But if you had a, a much more complicated, how far out you take this um, could change a lot. But when you're creating exploded views, I, I kind of find this interesting to consider. Uh, let's come back here because we've got a, a more interesting. And, uh, I'm gonna... So let's say we're creating this exploded view and we can do whatever we want with it, right? So we could take parts of these pieces and move them out farther if it's if it helps the 
the communication, the clarity. Um, a couple of things that are useful when you are considering something like this. Um, correct me out there if I'm wrong, but I believe this is called a tangent. So if I orbit and I'm not careful, I've created a view right here that looks like this piece and this piece are connected, right? Ooh, it's like <clears> the, uh, the uh, what was that called? Optical Illusions stream that we did. Oh, yeah, which was so fun. Go rewatch that. The Escher bench. Mm -hmm. So be careful when you're creating your view as you um, break pieces apart. Watch out for things like clarity, composition. Make sure pieces overlap in a, in a good way. Because again, if I line just even accidentally lines up somewhere here and this line continues into this one, it could cause confusion. So just those are some of the things to keep in mind. Otherwise, um, other considerations are there are plugins out there that will take your entire model and sort of blow the whole thing into uh, a fully exploded diagram. If that's what you mm -hmm. want, then that's out there. Um, I think leaving a lot of it as, um, as it will be and exploding just parts that you need uh, is, is what I'm going to prefer. Uh, so somewhere in here was, you know, the view where I'm looking at, okay, do I get nice overlap? Do I get clarity among stuff? And then we'll talk about adding dash lines. So with that in mind, and, and sorry, is this going on a large sheet of paper? Is this going on a small sheet of paper? Do I need to consider that I'm going to try to shove other pieces next to this? Do I have a lot of room to play with that I can you know, keep extending this out? So all those are the things to think about. Good call. Now, I, I mentioned that um, I was going to talk about something about uh, a tip with the using loose tenons or mortise and tenon joinery. And then I, I created this, but I didn't actually create the joinery for this, the, the mortises. Mm -hmm. If you've used our native solid tools, um, then what you would know is this won't work the way I've set it up for a couple reasons. One, I've got a nested, uh, nested component in here. And even if I didn't, um, if I have, you know, some lines just as guides in here, that might disqualify it from being a solid. So if I move this over here and say, okay, I need to subtract this uh, from this to create the, the void, and I use our native solid tools, uh, it's just, it's going to tell me it's not going to work. Or at least I think that's what it's going to tell me. Yeah, because you got to have a solid, right? Yeah. See how it won't even let me click on this? This will, but if I hover over this, it's like, not a solid. Um, I'm going to, let me just again to show the other reason why I don't want to do this. So let's say I did have a solid. I'm going to make this group just for the sake. This component, um, so if I say, cut it in there. Oh, that worked great. Wait a second. Let me look at entity info. This is a solid group now. It, I, it's, it's not a component. It did not copy it to my other components. So the, the native solid tools, um, very cool, but they were also written, um, 10 years ago, that, and some of the plugins that are available for solid tools just frankly work a lot better. So um, uh, all of that to say, 
I'm going to use something called bool tools. Bool tools? Bool tools? Can you say that fast, Matt? Bool tools? Bool tools? Bool tools? Bool bool? <laughs> bool? So here, let's take this. I'm going to make a copy of this over here, and I'm going to see if bool tools will uh, do this for me. Now, um, I think the order might switch too. So I'm going to click here and then click here. And it's going to say one of them's not a solid, so it might not work, but I'm going to try it anyway. And it did because it's I, the, the main cutting piece was solid. So it did work and it preserved my component and, and worked on all the other components. Very nice. So that, so, so are, are you saying that, <clears throat> are you saying that you'd be a fool to not use bool tools on your stool? Is that Matt, what I, I couldn't have said it better, buddy. <laughs> uh, you would be a fool <laughs> to not use bool on your stool. <laughs> uh, Matt. Try this at home. It works. <laughs> and, uh, uh, no, that's pretty cool. I actually haven't heard of uh, bool tools before. Uh, let me let me say it's a paid extension. Um, I know, um, and uh, there might be Christina Inneroth might have a version, but it might be paid too. I think she has a version. There's another. There's two or three or four Boolean extensions out there. I'm not sure if any of them are free. So, just. That's true. I'm going to hide these. Yeah, good to know. Yeah, I dropped the link in the chat, but uh, yeah, be aware it is a, a paid extension. So, <clears throat> I also like that because of the, the, the way it's reversed, so I can click on this one. Yeah, click, click, yeah, click, click, yeah. But the... Um... Oh, wait, I better leave that. No, never mind. Folks in the chat saying Enerot solid tools are free. Okay. And um, it may work a little differently. It may or may not work with the way that I've created this nested non-solid component, but I, I believe Christina's version preserves components, which of course is, is ideal here, most important. Mm -hmm. So good to know. Thank you out there in the chat. Um, so we have created, and I'm going to turn this back on. Now we've created um, the joinery, and uh, and we kept our components, and and we were able to use my convoluted version of a loose tenon. And so win, 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 win. Very nice. All right. So where are we? We are creating an exploded view here. And something like that. I could probably overlap this. I don't need it to be that deep. So I'll bring that in. That should be fine. Um, I don't really have anything to show with the top since I didn't create the joinery for that, but we'll just leave that as is. So here's our. Exploded view. And I'm just going to move that down just for so we've got our front, top, useless left, <laughs> and exploded. Um, now, uh, it can be helpful to create, you know, some. This is pretty straightforward, but we're going to create a uh, some dashed edges to show you know this is how this assembly goes because that can be helpful in different pieces. 
And so I'm going to draw this line out. And maybe I will. Not, I'm not too worried that I just need two edges, actually. Or I could draw something else, but they should be connected. So I'm going to make those a component. Because again, I'm following the rule. Even something like this where I'm creating dashed lines. Um, I will make it a component. So I'm not breaking that rule. Hey, you made up the rules. You, that means you got to follow them. I didn't make up the rule, but I will follow it. <laughs> I did advocate for the rule for sure. <clears throat> Um, I'm going to, I'm editing that. I'm going to draw, say, a line here, something like that. And now uh, I don't need that one. That may be more confusing. Maybe that line should be, you know, this way. Whatever you think is best. But where's the new tag? Now, dashed lines, some of you will know that if I take this here and move it to uh, dashed lines tag, that I can change the dashes here. And then um, we can see this. We can see the dashed lines. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty cool. Uh <laughs> We're going to we're going to change this in layout. You actually have more control over this in layout. So, you don't have to make this dashed here because we can do so in layout and probably will do so. But you can leave it dashed here because you can still change it there. So, up to you. Um and then so we've got this stuff So finally, we need to come over and say, okay, well, let's, we can throw dimensions on some of this, but maybe we'll create the, the version that's like, okay. You know, if we wanted to highlight just the leg or the leg assembly or things like that, or just lay these out. So now one thing that I, uh, I think a lot of people find useful depending on the type of project you're doing is there are also cut list extensions out there and I'm not going to go into like any depth necessarily into any cut list. Um, just if you haven't seen any, this is a, a more, there's, there's more going on here. If I select this, a simple, but certainly, uh, effective cut list extension is just called cut list and it's cut list 4.1. I'm pretty sure. <clears throat> so if I bring this up, I think this was written a long time ago. It still works. So all good, but it, it will output, um, a layout potentially and cut list. So you can come in here and customize some of how this works. But just to say, if I run this, it's got all <clears throat> my two armrests, my two black back legs, and uh, it's giving me, you know, dimensions here and then the cut list. And um, very nice. So I could copy that into something else. Uh, I could, the layout, I've had some funky things show up. It should give me a layout uh, as well, a sort of a, a suggested board cutting pattern. Um, okay. There it is. Nice. 
<laughs> awesome. It's board cutting. And and if we look at these, this is uh, separating each of these boards by sort of width. So it's saying, you know, all the stretchers uh, are one inch generic. This, this. It, it's including all my loose tenons. So let me come in here um, and not, let me just say, I'm going to turn those off. So again, I, I've got these all. Turn those on or off, but I'll turn those off. And now, because um, I, I don't need those in my, my cut list. So I select that again and run it. And I should, yeah, not have those little, little pieces. Uh, I've still got a little piece of something here. But anyway, if that's useful, it's pretty straightforward. There's another one. And, I, and this one's free. There's another one out there, I think it's also free, called Open Cut List, OCL. It is in active development. I, I think the developer of that one is like um, interested in feedback. Uh, our friend Matt Donnelly just did a video on using that. So it's much more robust, but I think, but you have to set your stuff up uh, very specifically so that it, it can interpret it correctly. So. If the, if cut lists are something that you kind of live in and die by, go check out either cut list, uh, this one, or open cut list. And uh, there's some good options out there. Good call. Yeah, and echoed in the chat as well. Uh, people recommending those two extensions. So you're in good company. Sweet. Uh, this one, let's see. Oh, Dave saying the author of Cutlass 4.1 passed away of number a number of years ago, but his extension has been bulletproof. I'm well, sorry to hear that, but uh, yeah, I did not realize not. that. But thank you for your very very excellent extension. Yeah, totally. Brian saying he loves Open Cutlist. Um, so yeah, good to have a couple different options out there. Very cool. <clears throat> and I know I also have a bunch more wood sound effects that I have to use at some point. So now is going to be it. <laughs> so, sorry to hear. Also, don't forget, that, you know, this wood's looking a little rough. You got to make sure to sand it. So if anybody likes the sound of sanding, oh, I have hours of it. <laughs> um you know i so i'm gonna send this to layout and and start to build this out a little bit over there mm -hmm. uh but uh talking about sanding and the analogy again i'll credit dave for our conversation this week that i thought was apt uh where's my send to layout let's go Uh, we were talking about the idea of pre-finishing uh, in woodworking projects, and for uh, what do you what do you, do you have any idea what that means, Matt? I have no idea what pre-finishing means. Finishing seems like it's the last thing you do, and pre, I guess pre-finishing is just doing the thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's my guess. No. Yeah. Okay. So what well, is it for <clears throat> pre-finishing. Uh, so let's say we're building this and when we do, what we're going to do is you're going to mill down common, um, thicknesses. So we may mill down the thickness of the front and back legs, uh, then we'd mill down these pieces. So there's, there's a sort of order of operations that you try to think of and, and you do, and that, that builds in your efficiency, right? And then we're going to cut in joinery and we've got two sizes of loose tenons in here with different lengths, but that's, you know, but so let's say we're doing this whole back, uh, back assembly back here. 
And I may take uh, some time to set up a jig for cutting all of these um, mortises. And then once I get that all done, I am really, uh, what's called a dry fit is where I take the loose tenons and you would put it all together without glue, but you're just making sure it all goes together. When I get to that point, I am so like, I've spent hours to get here. I want to glue it together. I want the satisfaction of having gotten to that, that place. And so I'm really anxious to throw glue and, and, and assemble this. But pre-finishing is the idea that says, if you did, if I did, and I have been guilty of doing so for sure, um, I would have to come back once this is all assembled and glued up and I'd have to sand here and then in between here and in between here and this tiny little ledge. Yeah, you just keep that sand because it's insanely painful to try to, you know, sand this. And then depending on the finish you're putting on, this is why spray finishing is so great because you, you don't have to worry about it. But if I was applying a hand rubbed finish, I'm doing the same thing. I'm trying to get into every of those little corners and in between all these slats and in between here and my whole bench is assembled and I have to lean over and break my back to do it or I have to take this heavy bench and put it up on my workbench. Pre-finishing means take time to, uh, I'm gonna sand each of these pieces before they're glued up and then I'm potentially even going to apply a finish to them before gluing everything up because then once it's all glued up you're you're basically done and you don't have that okay and it's the it's it's the type of thing where you have to again like oh i i want the satisfaction i spend a lot of time cutting the joinery i want the satisfaction of gluing it up i don't want to have to transition to finishing i'm i mean i may be still cutting other joinery here but but if you do it down the road, you're better off. And that was this, that's the whole idea again of like, set your models up correctly from the start because down the road, you're better off. Um, oh, interesting. <clears throat> yeah, that makes sense. So when you're like in the zone of a woodworking project, you want to kind of stay in the same step. Like you're saying, if you're still like cutting stuff, you don't want to really be going to the finishing stage yet. You want to kind of stay in your mental zone where you're at. Oh, definitely. Like for you personally, is that how you feel? Oh yeah. You're, you, you get into a zone of doing something and yeah, I'm like, I don't want to, and I never want to go to the finishing stage because yeah, sanding. There are some people out there who claim that they can like get into a zone and, and like enjoy sanding. I don't believe any of them. I don't believe anybody who says they like sanding. I just think they're straight up trying to spam people. I, I call <laughs> BS. So, and if you do and you genuinely do, I'm so I, I won't ever believe you ever. So sorry. <laughs> Bold words. <laughs> I love it getting fired up in the uh Woodworking community has a lot of these kind of uh, live wires that you can uh, <laughs> touch on, you know, open nerves or whatever. Right. <laughs> I I just, um, for the sake of applying, I threw a couple of different styles in here. Um, mm. So I did that. I saved the model because I had forgotten to do that. Again, if you had saved any of your scenes with styles, you'd be set. But I'm going to update the model reference. And now I've got um, a bit of style. So last week, um, Eric went into kind of setting up uh, some of the basic framework of a layout template as far as just like common elements. And we've got some of that. So in the interest of time, I'm not going to set that up uh, with any depth. We're just going to do a very simple
So I'm going to do something like this. And so I've got uh, a lot of good people's thoughts about sanding in the comments. Oh, let, let's hear them. Let's hear them. Keggy says, I like sanding about as much as I like putting my head in a bowl of fire. OK. Uh, <laughs> Aaron said, "People who uh, who's, people who say they like sanding probably also like pouring salt in their own wounds." Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so that's funny. Um, Aman has to take off. Well, thanks for stopping by. Uh, yeah, catch you next week. Have a good one. Have a good weekend. And Dave is asking here, pins or tails first, which means. Absolutely nothing to me, but I'm sure something uh, to you. <laughs> Pins or tails first is a reference to cre cutting dovetails. And uh, okay. a dovetail, we, we won't go down this, but a dovetail, you know, has two different parts that, that, that come together. And some people prefer to cut one and use that as the reference of the other and then vice versa. So it's another just contentious. I don't cut dovetails. No, no pins, no tails. You refuse to? I, I, created a, um, I created a table saw jig to cut my dovetails. And uh, I can cut pins or tails first. So it depends on if it's Tuesday, Thursday, or after 4 p.m. on Sunday. <laughs> nice. Well, like we said earlier, you made the rules. So, uh, you know, your day and date, uh, that's all yours. You set it up, and as long as you follow, then you're all good. Exactly. <laughs> I'm going to go back. Uh, I don't have to do this, but I'm going to go back to my SketchUp model here. Go back to our front view and make sure perspective is on and just pick sort of a, a perspective view here that will give us an overview of our so something like this will be fine create one more scene And I'm going to save the model, come back, and update my reference. Of course you're going to do that. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and so now I have my perspective view. Um, when you're creating these views, um, as I, as I uh, at this point, sort of... Uh, if you've used layout or not, we'll see if these will be useful tips. But as I keep resizing this window, you can see the model view resizes as well. So if I get this to kind of a, it's a perspective, so, but you know, a position that's not a scale that I want, I'm going to hit preserve scale. Then when I resize the window, it's going to preserve that view. So I'm going to do that and then this one will make our uh, front view. And as best you can, when you're creating um, axon views in layout, it's going to be some arbitrary scale. Find something nearby that's going to work. I mean, that happened to be really nearby. You can create different scales, but something that you can use for all of your axon views. Um, make sure those are all consistent. And, and again, I'll just help preserve, uh, again, consistency. And for me, yeah, one to eight. If you want to create your own view, uh, your own scales, I believe, is it in document or is it in per references or settings? 
So you can create, you can add a, a, a new scale here. Um, you know, I've got one, nine, six, one to four, one to eight, a bunch of arbitrary ones, but you can create new scales and say, this in the papers, this in model, and just look at some of the existing ones and get something close, as long as you got something consistent. All right, so with that said, let me And the nice thing about the way we set it up uh, or the way that it, it, you can set it up, when I take this over again, if I had um, a meaningful left view, I just choose that and it should ideally just be already aligned. It's easy though, this is well enough. Let me turn off uh, grid snap. This little point here, we can grab that, move it to any point in the model. So if I move it to this corner, I can then snap that corner here and then use either move with shift key to keep it on the same, but it's easy enough to line those up. You can have that pretty well done if, uh, if you set it up in SketchUp, but it's also easy to do. So I'm gonna take this, move it back here and say top view. So that little gizmo is also like a uh, custom inference point if you wanna inference from a particular to a particular point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and again, if you haven't used layout, this little gizmo is sort of your, your everything gizmo. I can move this around, but uh, this allows me to rotate either to specific degrees or to any point out here. And you can snap it to a point and then use that to snap to grids, to uh, things you draw in layout, to other points of your SketchUp model. So I can easily line this back up by coming in and doing that. Now maybe I would choose a different scale if I wanted to stack these on top of each other because this won't work, or uh, uh, at least for this page size. I would say, whatever, we're gonna keep moving forward. Um, but set that up as, be, as need be. Um, Here's one thing that I don't recommend. Um, sometimes depending. <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> don't go here. Don't rotate your layout view like this. You can do it. But what happens? So why, why, why would I suggest not doing that? Let's create some more perspective views down here. Um, I may rotate this for some reason because I wanna see a detail. Um, I wanna come in and I wanna be like, okay, let, show me this detail. I'm gonna create uh, uh, something here. Mm -hmm. Once you get out of going into your SketchUp model, that relation, like it, it's not consistent. So be careful about that. Um, I, I don't suggest, and this can be true even of uh, orthographic views, especially where, so let's say, um, let's duplicate this page. Don't need that or that, but in this one, we want the uh, parts. Well, this is especially tempting. Why would we go in and why wouldn't we rotate? Because from this one, uh, maybe I say, well, this is fine, but I wanna take this view, rotate it 90 degrees, um, Uh, why isn't it rotating? Uh, 
and uh, I'd want this part, right? Yeah. That that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I, I get it. Sure. Try to avoid it, though. Um, you can change. You, you have over here some parameters around your layout views. But they're going to work best if you have that consistent. I, I, I don't know how to say why you shouldn't do it. I, I think it should work. It just it. When you rotate your view, you introduce the potential for more kind of unpredictability between SketchUp and layout. So that's just a, uh, a suggestion of if you want a vertical, you know, different um, views of this, then one of the things you can do that will work really well is come in, say to here and just make copies of the things that you want different views of. And and if we anticipate that we want these horizontal or vertically, then set it up here as opposed to changing your, your view and layout. So that is just, that's, you don't have to, but that's a, I, I think you'll, you'll find your layout experience better if you're not creating a, a lot of rotated views. Nice, just a helpful reminder to avoid Danger. Danger, Will Robinson. Danger. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so we we need to hum along here. We are. 36 minutes past the hour. <clears throat> exactly. Here's... um. Let me look at my cheat sheet and talk some of the things that we want to talk about. So, uh, yes, use tags. Talked about exploded diagrams, talk about bull tools. Um, rotating the view. Uh, cut list. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's talk a moment about this extension called component descriptor. Um, which one do we want? When I select these uh, components, we look over here in our components uh, or library. Okay, this is leg lower by unknown, no description, no description. And it's good to note at this point that the, because of how this, uh, you know, we've got this curve and this angle here and a little angle down here that we would be cutting this from a board that's larger than our final uh, final piece, but that's understood. Just um, the same thing with this, potentially, the bounding boxers is always going to be some version of a rectangle. Component descriptor, I'm going to select these and up in our extensions, I'm going to say, Component descriptor is um, on the Sketchucation site, and it's going to add whatever dimensions of the bounding box to the description of the component. In fact, let me just a quick before I apply that. So back here in our layout document, if I This changing viewport here, I bet you Dave's rolling because this is one of the things that can happen. If you if you change your viewport, um, it shouldn't, but it can change on you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Dave had to step aside. Uh, you were rolling on something, so I didn't uh, bring it up, but he had to leave for the afternoon, so... Uh... He got one away on him. He's not. Uh, he's not going to heckle you from the, <laughs> from the gallery. Again, just so. it's one of those things to know. 
if you create multiple views and uh, I'm not suggesting you shouldn't uh, necessarily do that, it's supposed to um, preserve scale. See how up here in the SketchUp model we have a viewport, um, camera, effects, and uh, style and tags. These are all attributes that you can change per viewport. So if I want a different style for this viewport, I should be able to come in and change that. And if I want to change this to the uh, exploded view, I should be able to do that and create. And in this exploded view, I want the um, seat off. You should be able to change all that per view. And that's so powerful. It used to be um, just a few versions ago that you had to set everything up in scenes and then you'd apply a scene. But for every viewport, you'd create a new scene. You don't have to do that now. You have all of these attributes. I, I have found, and I think that's the warning, is there are times when um, some of this stuff, you reset, let's say one view here. If I, um, am I, uh, yeah, style camera, where am I? Top, front. So I've changed the front view, but I still have my top view scene, okay? This will trip you up if you don't know that there's now like a kind of broken relationship between these because camera and viewport. And so if I choose front uh, perspective view from here, nothing happens. And I'm like, why? why? Why is nothing happening? This is a good thing. This is because you can change some of this stuff here, but you've got to understand that you have changed the attributes. And when you do that, you either need to reset, you know, your style, your camera, or if you go to the viewport, I can reset everything back to whatever the default was for this scene. Um, so please be aware of that, <clears throat> that no matter what I change here, it's not going to change because I changed my view. And, and that would, that could also happen if I said, okay, well, I'm going to, manually affect my view. And then I'm like, wait, let me get back to my top view. Nope. You need to reset the camera and then it'll behave. So, but if you have multiple things selected and you only meant to reset one, right, so just you, be careful with your viewports. That's uh, that's just, just to know. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good warning. Uh, and I'll also give a warning that I'm about to play a warning sound. Earlier, I played a, a sound, and Keggy said he spilled tea all over his shirt. Before, so, sorry. <laughs> but there's, there's well, a warning for the warning. There is a warning. Um, so that's that. But uh, yeah, good thing to keep in mind for sure. And I guess if people are having the issue where you're selecting a viewport and the scene's not changing, then resetting it is a good uh, step to try to get to the bottom of why that's not working as expected. Yeah. So understand, yeah, you can reset s just specific parameters like tags or the camera, or you can reset all the parameters for a or multiple scenes. Um, now that was a tangent. We were talking about component descriptor. If I go in here to labels, I named all my components correctly. So yay, good for me. Um, one of the th options I have is I could type a name or I could use the default auto tag, which, uh, okay, good. Up here. Oops. Uh, and so all of this, um, I get for free because I named uh, my components correctly. Here's what you can do with component descriptor. So I come back to here. I'm going to select these elements 
except for I don't want to bother with my uh, tenons, my loose tenons. So turning those off. Select this extensions. Um, there's a, a, a number of settings in here. These are mostly the default ones, but I can say process all, everything in your scene, or I'll just process the selection, for example. I may want to process everything, um, but for now, let's just say what happens when we process the selection. Okay. If I look at components now, See how it's added this one and a half inch thick by et cetera, et cetera. It's got oh. um, descriptions written for uh, the components. And let me save the model, come back here and reload update model reference. This time I'm going to add these again And I have the option for the component um, name or to include the component description. So if I do that, it automatically is giving me, it's one inch by two inch by two inch. And depending on what you uh, want, like, so this is, this is uh, nice. Yeah, oh, that's cool. <clears throat> I like so it. That can be super handy. Um, again, that's in Sketchucation. It's called Component Descriptor. It was written by Tig, but I think uh, Tig collaborated with uh, with Dave because this is something that would be useful. If um, sometimes, nice. I mean, it's terrific, right? <laughs> it's terrific. Um, <laughs> If you don't like, so right now, this the way this is written out, one foot, eight inches. And if you would rather have that be just 20 inches, uh, I believe that is a factor of whatever, whatever my, uh, my units here are working as. So oh, okay. if I change that, and then run this um, again, I think, so I'm saving, I'm coming back here. And yeah, so now the, so that's not a setting you'd find in layout or something, that's the units and and run that again, if you, if you depending on how you want that displayed. Very cool. Um, and so Randy, I think has this right based on what I'm seeing here, but he says, so the, the dimensions are for the bounding box of the component. Is that true? That's true. Okay. Um, like for yeah. the round seat, it tells you 20 by right. 20. By exactly. 20. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, and to that end, you know, that's a, another case where be careful how you, if I had the arbitrary thing here and it changes my bounding box, you can, not only that, even if I, I come in and say, change the axis way over to something else, that could potentially throw it too. So yeah, just as long as you're keeping a, a good axis and, and a bounding box that's relative, uh, then you'll be good. Okay. Um, we are pretty close to time and uh, kind of jumped around a lot. Um, yeah. Hey, there's a lot to cover. I love the cheat sheet too. I feel like, uh, <laughs> I'll screenshot this and save it for later for next time. I'm, uh, doing a uh, layout. So, um, a couple little things to note, um, in my opinion, I use vector rendering. If I'm going to send this to say, uh, 
uh, I want the, my output to go to a CNC or laser or something like that, don't use vector. Um, it, the, it doesn't cost you much when your model's this size, but that's just, that's the thing that trips, uh, so many people will say layout is just absolutely unusable and it's because everything they brought in or they turned immediately to vector and that is hugely computationally heavy and it, and it's not necessary so um when i take this and i just go into my document setup and my output resolution for the paper i can keep it medium which in most cases is going to work fine or i can turn it up to high if i do want something better so I've got high output resolution. These are all raster. Yeah, if I turn it to vector, it cleans it up, but I, I'm not gaining anything, especially not one at a scale one that's printed. And I don't wanna have to uh, deal with the potential of slowing down my model. So I, I suggest just stay away from it entirely. You don't need it. Um, there you or go. You heard it here first. If you really want to do it as do it, you know, before you you uh, export, but don't do it while you're building out your your sheets. Um, I talked about two kind of philosophies of of ways to use tags, and. This one is, um, is great because when I take this model into layout, uh, by having things tagged kind of based on what they are in the model, if I want to isolate just this, you know, side group, well, I can turn stuff off, right? And, uh, I can turn off that whole side layer assembly, even though it's not a nested component, just because I've created a, a folder. And uh, so if I wanted to just see this in my layout view, this, this is a really nice, and you, you can do quite a lot with this. If you wanna isolate parts, you can tag them with a lot of, um, you know, increase complex complexity. So I don't have to, I, I may not even have to break out separate parts over here, uh, potentially. Now, maybe you want to, because it's just simpler and you want to do that thing we were showing where, well, I want this view and I want that view and I'm going to show those side by side. Um, that actually, this would be a better example because this one you may want to have because this has a uh, joinery, right? That you're like, okay, I need a front view. I need a side view. So you may stack up two or three of those next to each other and be able to call that out uh, separately. But if you wanted to, uh, you could also have a version that's right here, that's rotated. And this one is tagged back leg side view or something. So you, you don't have to break your model out if you use a lot of tags. Um, so that's one way to approach this and, uh, and you, can, you can push it really far. That's nice. part. Go ahead. I was just going to say, nice. That's a good, good call. Yeah. Um, there, if you want to kind of, there's a different approach depending on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to create this really kind of, you know, long, you lay a lot of steps out in detail. I'm going to show you a different approach. Um, it just as an idea. So let me see here. All right, what do we got? This would act more like a template. Um, so 
in this, what I've done, I've created these um, generic kind of placeholder boxes. And all of these are on um, this tag that I've called layout hidden elements because we're not going to see those in layout and box labels. So those are my two, you know, layout helpers. Um, I have created these just as placeholders and we would bring in our model and, and uh, replace it. So in our case, let's use this example and bring it in. So I may copy all of this. I don't want, uh, we were talking earlier about like other pieces depending on this leg, you may cut that out from a piece that's wide enough to accommodate it, or you may cut it out from a piece that would give you kind of straighter grain. So creating a board like this is another piece that you could overlay in layout. Um, in woodworking, do you always want a nice straight grain? Is that this this angle is is not so dramatic that it would matter um but it could matter if you had something that was like um this because if your grain is running this way the more dramatic that angle is the more you introduce weakness from the grain because if your grain's running oh. this way and so in that case if your grain's running this way, yeah, you get more strength. Oh, it's that type okay. of consideration. Also, you may be able to cut this out of a, a, a smaller board than, you know, so yeah, one of those things that's like for your consideration. Okay, yeah. Got to know. All right, so I just copied all that stuff. I'm gonna paste it in here and we should see um, all those tags come in, uh, but, um, we may not, we may or may not want them because this is, this is sort of an example of generic tags, but anyway, copied, there they are. And maybe for you, what you will see as well, um, that folder structure doesn't come in. So if you're copying between models, um, your tags will copy, but your folder structure for some reason doesn't. I think that's probably something that'll get fixed in the future because it feels like it should. Yeah. I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about any of this. <laughs> um, so way back, we've talked about keeping simplicity as a way of like pr protecting yourself from from future changes right that that that's the whole point of the less complex your system is the more like you're just assured that you you can make changes to it mm -hmm. this uh potentially introduces complexity but again as long as you use consistency or something that's fine so I'm going to put this in here and whereas all this was tagged over here, I'm going to tag it hero one, uh, all of it. Um, and maybe you don't have to, but, um, and then I may not need this. Um, oh, you know what? I, I'm going to hide everything except for the layout stuff. Right on. And the build, um, uh, by cop, by bringing it in, this should all be locked. I, I should have had all this locked before. Ah, uh, okay. Um, aside from these necessarily, but we'll unlock them as needed. So let me lock those. 
and then turn this back on. I don't think we'll need that anymore anyway. In this case, this is the this is the example of you set this up and you have corresponding views, uh, a file in layout. Therefore, once you bring this over and now this, I'm going to tag hero two, and now I'm going to make another copy and tag it axonometric. And I may only need one exploded view, but I created flexibility for multiple ones. Mm -hmm. um, but this one, we're going to tag exploded one. And we should know, like, you're going to have to go in and make some changes in customization, but by doing that, when I go to hero one, everything's already preset up that all these tags are turned off and my view here um, so when I go into my scene, I'm just going to go to hero one and click camera location on and off hero this one, okay, I'm going to click hero 1B, toggle camera on and off, so that I'm just going in here and changing this up, hero 2A. I created, you could create all that with uh, one. I created this one because I had some pieces that, um, you know, like a box with a lid that you want to show both open and closed. Maybe the open version is, is hero 2. But again, you could set all that up in the original one just on just how depending on how you tag it so it's just however you want to do it but um hero two way so i go through here um i already have axon front left right set up but um you know i better so let me select all everything here and it's still selected i'm going to do that thing zoom selection Toggle this, axon left, uh, zoom selection, toggle. So I, that's the idea um, is that if you want a template that you can set this up in and that sort of propels you down the way, then uh, I did. I, Lost my selection. Um, this is one way, one approach where you could do it. Um, mm -hmm. The the thing that you have to be careful of um, is that the more copies of this you make, you hopefully set it up so that if you make any changes, um, if I make a change like we said earlier to, well, now I want to move this down. I mean, this is a component. If I came in here and put an arc here, that's fine. That's propagated throughout all the components, right? So I'm okay. Mm -hmm. But if I move this down, this is not a nested component. Now, maybe you did because again, you, you, you can, your approach can vary, but that change is not propagated through. Now I would have to recopy this stuff all over the model. Um, right. So just things to consider because I, this would be great if if you never had to change this design ever ever again um then this is a quick way to set it up and then once you have the uh, a corresponding file set up in layout a lot of the work is done for you but changes it if you make changes at a certain level those may or may not come across because we've complicated 
you know, the number of copies and how the model, how we're using the model. So <clears throat> that is the consideration, the concern. This one, um, the I set it up originally because I wanted to be able to take, and all these are numbered correspondingly. Oh, you know what? Let me just pull up a different file because we're out of time. Yeah, yeah make it easy. Uh, David over on YouTube said he stumbled into the session and he says, awesome stuff. So thanks for uh, thanks for checking it out, David. And we do these uh, every week, not necessarily woodworking uh, oriented, but SketchUp oriented. So, uh, And the full recording of this will be available on YouTube after the fact as well. So uh you can go back and check out all the all the goods that Tyson was showing off today. Yeah, thank you for joining us. Here's um, here's what I was playing with, and I, again, this sort of that whole danger Will Robinson because we're creating multiple copies and scenes and views in layout that don't necessarily correspond with the scene. But if I broke this out and um. So I said, okay, I'm going to create a graphic here that's just the box and then a graphic here that's like use, you know, the blue tape method to glue up the box. And then this graphic suggests you can use splines. And then this one over here was, and here's an alternate method to cut the bottom where you use this um, router bit and instead of, uh, instead of a, a dado. And then down here, I was talking about, okay, okay, now, now for this treasure chest, you're doing the feet. You can, you know, here's the, the board that you'd need. Here's a little jig for a suggestion of how to cut this, these small parts safely. And then you'd use another jig here to uh, help you place it while you're, um, you know. So in this version, I'm creating a, a more step-by-step-by-step and some of this, again, if you really were meticulous, you just leave it all in the same spot and create a whole ton of tags and you could still manage it. I was trying to see, okay, I'm gonna have one scene here, my build one through 12. And if we, um, that corresponds, where's my tags? That corresponds to this set and again i i don't have to know as long as i'm in this box i know this goes on b6 this goes to b8 this goes to b10 and that's all well and good and then in layout i have this overall scene so i was going in and creating individual customized viewports but i was being careful uh, and knowing that if I reset any viewport, that it's going to look like this. Right. Uh, but that way, the layout doc of that? I think I, um, I never finished it. Um, this, this was a work in process. This was an experiment, but yes. Um, I, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I was like, well, interesting to see how that comes together. Is this the one? I don't know if this is or not. Let's see. Nope. Yeah, all good. Just curious. Um, cool. Yeah. This is another one of those things that, um, let's see. These are rendered out. This is not a direct uh, to SketchUp. Um, if you, if you like color, you can customize some of that through styles, but if you, um, some people like coming in and being like, I'm going to take and use very bright colors and I'm going to color all of these something different. And that way it's much easier that when I break the, you know, then it's very clear to see the corresponding piece. And when I take these and separate them over here, 
into my uh, cutting pieces. Mm -hmm. I should have copied it, but you know, I can see the, the relationship. Uh, if you do that, like McDonald's place. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that communicates really well, but if you do that, you, some of you may know. So again, the, the whole, uh, danger will Robinson. If oh, where's that drop? I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> these these pieces should all be the same but you can paint in SketchUp you can paint inside a component or you can, can paint the container I could paint the outside of these um, different now you wouldn't want to do that because you'd want to preserve and be like, no, I, I need to make sure that this back leg is always green. So I wouldn't want to do that. But if you ever wanted to do a one-off and be like, let me call this piece out separately and color it, you know, add some color to because of this particular step or something. You can't change the original one or you've messed up the rest of the drawing. And if I have painted this something, I can't paint just this one different anyway, because I've painted the inside. Painting the component on the inside versus outside is another one of these things that sort of, if that's what, if that's the direction you want to go, commit to it from the start, because it is going to be very hard to mix, you know, having a nice texture, having different bright colors, um, and down the road, preserving the uh, changes because you've, you've introduced different versions of your file. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Uh, also recently Here. Aaron had a uh, video on painting inside versus outside. I think it was Aaron, right? Uh, I think so. Of, of containers. Um, so check out our YouTube channel. Maybe I'll put a link. Uh, in the finished video to check that out if you're interested in more detail on that. But uh, yeah, good tips for sure. Good to know you pick one style and stick with it. Don't change horses midstream. Um, it's good to all in all, it's always good to know what you're what you're working with from the start, you know, model with intent. Yes, you know, document with intent. So um, I, I, uh, here's my bad naming conventions. I can't find, I, I had, uh, created that treasure chest as a set of plans to play around with it, but I can't find it now. That's my, that's my bad habits it's shining through. Hardly anything works the very first time you try it. No, well, this is not the first time. <laughs> <laughs> It's that's the problem. It's many, many times and it's very established bad habits. But that's why I tried to say think ahead, like you just said, Matt, and uh, simplicity and uh, consistency uh, accounting for changes, your friend. Man, we are way over and just humming along. So let's let's bail out of here. Um, there's like we could keep going, but I, I hope. The ideas of, of this and like, I, I know like there, there's just different directions you could take and your personality and, and how well you are structured uh, and if you can maintain your template system, it could just vary. So what would work for you and, and stuff could change. Uh, but hopefully something in there was useful i don't know a bit scattered yeah, no absolutely was <laughs> hey great job danger will robinson danger this was a terrific day we learned an enormous amount and it really bodes well for the future <laughs> yeah you did great thanks uh for the comprehensive look uh you know people can dip in and out take what they what they need for their own particular workflows but it was cool to see um how you would approach 
the different challenges with uh, with woodworking workflows and SketchUp and layout. So yeah, hey, excellent stream if I do say so myself uh, by you and by everyone in the chat. Good job uh, by you. Great comments today. Um, great enthusiasm and good to see some new names in there. And of course our uh, returning champion names as well. Thanks for tuning in. Um, yeah, everyone chime in in the chat saying great session. So uh, they agree with me. Good job. Nice. <laughs> um, I'm remembering that I, I said I would show dash lines and layouts and I never did. So here's your, here's our ending. Um, these dash lines show up because we set it to dash, but uh, this is, has a tag dash lines that we can turn on and off. And in, uh, in SketchUp, I just left these all, I just left all these lines in here as one component. Um, and it'd be really easy to come in and shift this around and draw new lines. Um, so that's just, you know, you could have several, but that's just one. So in here, those dashed lines, uh, let me, I say those dashed lines could be, we can change that if we click on that style and say, uh, do we want it to be something like this? Or even if we want those dashes, we can change the scale, the edge width. And so if I do that, that should, yeah, now they're, they're smaller and I can continue to refine that. You know, maybe I, I really want those to be subtle. So now they're very small. So um, you can't change that the dash version in layout. I do believe that um, your style needs to support dashes, but by default, most of them do. If we go into edit tab, dashes is uh, on for this style and all these styles. So nice, good to know. So in layout, you can customize further customize that and uh, yeah, let's let's call it there. So yeah, thanks again, everybody. Um, thank you, Matt. Thanks everybody for sticking through that winding winding road. No, it was great. A lot of great feedback. Ahmad saying somebody needs to push the stop button on you because you can't stop by yourself. It's true. Just dripping with tips. I like this topic. And I wish I had. Like, like, yeah, it's true. There it is. Stop. All right. Bye. Stop. Don't come back.